My name is Ahmad. I am from Republic of uh, Syria. I was uh, engineering, uh, networking engineering, but uh, I traveled from uh, Syria because uh, all my home is a bit damaged. I am from uh, Dirzur in a city its named uh, Bukamal. There is a Daesh is a tourism people come to take all this city all my city is run away from this uh, tourism group well englishman um i came here with the uh core group of the kitchen and i've been here now for two months uh i've been living in amsterdam and then decided to come here and see what the situation was and get some experience on the ground. I'm Zoe, I am from England and I've been down here in Edomeni for three months working with different projects. I study international development and so this is very related to what I study and kind of understand the situation on the ground more than just through textbooks. My name is Vadi. I'm 27 years old. I'm from Syria, Aleppo. Uh, I came uh, to Greece here because I escaped from the war. Uh, you know, Syria is a nice place, a nice country. I like it. So I hope that war will finish and I go back. Uh, in Syria, I have my own car, my own house. And now uh, it's destroyed my car is fired from bombing our house three times uh, a lot of my relatives they did from the bombing it's very difficult here also uh, people are from Greece are friendly are very kind the volunteers are very kind they came from another country to help us to hear us uh, to take our voice to outside I'm Dimitra, and I'm, I've been an activist here with Copolis since uh, August. Copolis is a social autonomous social place. It's uh, it starts from uh, the ecological movement of Thessaloniki, and um, it's uh, established since uh, three years ago uh, because they had some um, ecological. Uh, feelings and want to express with people and uh, but it's not only this Ecopolis it has a political side for uh, human rights my name is Miranda I came from Iraq I'm 21 this is our life we didn't choose to to run away if, my, if I can go back to my city, which is called Fallujah, I will go, even if it was war, even if it was ISIS. This is Europe. If you want to, to go in our country and judge if we are bad or Je suis venue à, à 
à Grèce euh, depuis d'un mois. Euh, J'étais là pour aider comme volontaire euh, individuel. J'étais là pour participer dans un projet de cuisine, euh, cuisine sociale pour les réfugiés, pour donner, hum, pour manger à différents camps qu'il y avait là. Et aussi, j'ai travaillé, euh, j'ai collaboré hum, avec des gens qui, qui habitaient là à, à Rios, des, des voisins et des autres volontaires. Et on mettait en ordre un peu pour, euh, les vêtements pour hommes, pour femmes, pour enfants. Et depuis, on faisait euh, une distribution euh, de tout ça dans les campements. Salam alaikum, bonjour tout le monde. Je m'appelle Ibrahim, j'habite en Algérie, j'ai 28 ans. J'ai un niveau universitaire, deuxième année, science exacte. J'ai passé euh, cinq ans dans le militaire algérien, dans la marine algérienne. Euh, je, je partais ici, euh, premièrement pour, par euh, avion algérie turc après Turc, euh, Lesbos, après euh, Lesbos à Athènes. Je n'ai pas, pas un problème comme les Syriens, la guerre est non. Je veux vivre dans mon pays. Ben maintenant, non. Tu n'as pas un piston. Jamais tu vivras à l'aise. Ok, si ça va gérer. Mon rêve, c'est. Si, si, il y a un jour, vivre. Vivre totalement la liberté. Je veux partir à la France pour vivre. Euh, avec mes familles. Euh, voilà. Je suis Alexandra Siafaka. Je suis 29 ans et je suis un journaliste et un filmmaker. I started uh, to take part in uh, the movement and the politics being a part of my life. When I was 15, when I saw the movement of uh, Seattle of uh, 99, uh, was the inspiration for me to take part uh, and start to, you know, to organize uh, the fight in Greece. Until then, I still, you know, uh, try to do whatever I can. Uh, like many people in Greece. It's one year now that uh, a left government has been elected, but uh, nothing really has changed in our lives. So, uh, in this crisis and after all these movements, we have to take uh, place uh, and we do in what happens with the uh, refugees and um, the last months, Greece is a big, uh, the, the biggest passage for those people from Middle East. Uh, borders are open for uh, uh, friends and Germans and uh, money, but they're not open for uh, refugees of war. I stayed in Mytilini for around uh, seven days, and then I moved to here, to Athens. Uh, now my plan is to go to Germany. I think uh, it's, it's very difficult now to stay in Syria. There's no war, there's no electricity, water, no internet. It was a very nice country, modern, but now it's destroyed. They destroyed a lot of uh, places, historical places. They want to hear the history of Syria. They want uh, to kill the people who are educated. I arrived to uh, island. Uh, it's named uh, Akai, uh, Kios. Kios. After that, I go to Athena. After that, to Sydney. I live with uh, half a family. The other I ca couldn't because uh, there is no enough money. The uh, economy is very difficult. I run with uh, my brother and my sister, but I, my father and my mom is. 
Parte. In Syria. And are they safe today? The life is very hard, but they continue the life. I ran away from Syria to Turkey. I have to climb the mountain. After that, go to Turkey. After that, uh, take by ship to Greece. It is very dangerous because you you are in sea and I can't swim. We ask my God to help to help us for my for my brother and sister. And about me, I don't care because I I am I kill myself as a dead man. Because we see a lot of uh, actions in Syria and very very bad. I ask I ask my God to no one say what I say. And there is a group, uh, three men is killed because the military of uh, Turkey is uh, killing On the boat? Yeah. Beside my eyes, they kill three men because they we are run away without uh, documents. And how many people uh, on the boat? Uh, 40, 46. J'ai resté uh, quatre mois à Turquie. Il y a beaucoup de risques, Turquie vers euh, Athènes, il y a beaucoup de risques. Tu vois, je suis parti à la à, à Turquie, à, à Lisbos, par Zodiac. Juste 9 mètres, le Zodiac, juste 9 mètres. Je pense qu'il euh, y, y a 50 personnes. Et il y a beaucoup de mauvais temps, j'ai passé 4 heures de la mer. Et après, il y aura le camp, le camp, le police de, de, de Moria ne me donne pas le quartier parce que je suis algérien. Ben, tu n'as pas un quartier, tu n'as pas un droit pour venir ici. Pour traverser de la Turquie à la Grèce, combien tu as dû payer Je suis chauffeur, pas payé, c'est gratuit. Voilà. Et tous les personnes, tous les personnes CIA, je pense 800 dollars, 900 dollars, 1000 dollars. When did you arrive here? How long? In Greece for a month, but here for 20 days. If our country is safe, you can come anytime. You will see the hospitality. Please. If you want, if you don't want us, tell us. We don't afford to waiting for nothing. There is two reasons that I cannot stay in Turkey because it's uh, expensive and no helping because of the low salaries there. This fair. Second, there is no rights for the refugees. Uh, Turkey only needs money. Uh, there is around 2.5 million Syrians in Turkey. But uh, maybe uh, it's like 5% uh, only they are refugees in the camps. The government there is forcing people to go to the camps to just register the name and go and live on your pay, on your money. Just to get money that they, I have refugees. When the people took the ferry during the night, on allait là, un petit groupe avec des, des choses pour, pour le voyage. Aussi des choses pour manger, ou de l'eau et, et tout ça. Quand, quand les frontières euh, de, de la Macédonie sont fermées, euh, à Rios, euh, il commençait à avoir euh, chaque fois plus, plus de réfugiés. Il ne savait pas la situation politique, il ne comprenait pas que les frontières étaient fermées. Et quand ils arrivaient, ils pensaient toujours qu'ils sont été déjà en Europe. We start to help at the Domini since uh, last February, more than a year, before uh, the NGO set up a, a camp. People staying mad. We try to to provide them tents, sleepy bunks. We make calls to the people to bring uh, food supplies, clothes supplies. And now we have a kitchen there, and uh, we cook daily 3,000 uh, portions. And the food, where does it come from? From people. This is the interesting fact that 
we don't buy our food. <laughs> People is giving us the food and we cook the meals. We have two cooks who cook at uh, the kitchen and uh, we have also volunteers to help to pack the portions and also the refugees are helping. It's like uh, we're getting a family there. Every, every day it's not like, okay, let's go to the refugees. It's like, let's go to Ahmed, let's go to Mohammed. Uh, it's like this. The kitchen itself, the aid delivery mission, kind of spawned from... There was an action kitchen based in Paris for the uh, climate summit. And out of that, a group that I was involved with and a few others came together to think, oh, we can, you know, let's keep this momentum going. You know, we've just been feeding thousands and thousands of people every day. There was a, a side project called Bellies Beyond Borders, which was, another, which was basically a food truck from Amsterdam that was going to come here. So those two ideas kind of molded together, came here to cook for people because there's, this, there's a knowledge and an infrastructure in place of how to cook for, you know, tens of thousands of people a day. And we thought, well, well, let's apply that to people that really, really need it. And that's what's happened. And it's grown a lot. I mean, we've made a lot of local connections here. And I mean, at first there were, what, 20 of us here? Yeah. With this kitchen, and it was mad. Like, it was absolutely, like, we were working, like, 16 hours a day, non-stop. Like, wouldn't have had time to stop and talk about something like this. Um, but now, because there's so many more people coming in and supporting it, we can cook at this capacity in a much more relaxed manner. Mm. So we have like, like 70 people, <laughs> <coughs> and people can learn the task. Like it's quite, it's a, it's a really nice structure. I think like we have, like I talked to NGOs on camp, and they're really grateful for what we do. But we are really accessible. I think we're really accessible. Like if you message the group, and it can work out, then yeah, just come along, and you are integrated into quite a welcoming, proactive environment. There's kind of locations outside of the main camp of Idomeni that actually don't get support by NGOs and big official structures, and so we're really involved in supporting them. And so there's a lot of stuff that because we've grown so much, we can we can support so many different areas. And it's really nice to see. They see us not as like official NGOs who come in, give out their stuff and leave. We come in, we dance, we have a joke, we don't have like time frames that we have to follow, we don't have like specific numbers of portions we have to give. Like actually like because of this like idea of solidarity that a lot of people here have, I mean not everyone, but like a lot of people really, really truly believe in, it's like showing the people there that we really, really are there with them. And I think this has kind of developed further into the whole concept of no border, like we're telling the people who are stuck there, like, we, we are here supporting you and we are here as Europeans who understand the system a bit more. And I don't understand the decisions, but through that idea of, like, solidarity, we can, we can really be behind people, I think. And I think that's incredibly important in this situation. You know, the way that NGOs kind of structure, I always say it, but it, and it's always this, like, animalistic, uh, we'll stick you in this area and we'll treat you like this and we won't talk to you and, and that's just so degrading it takes away your dignity from people and I think to have a structure like or have people like us coming in and just being like yeah like I'll, I'll play with your kid for like an hour or like I'll sit and <coughs> play guitar with you or like there's, there's a lot more that you can bring through just listening to people yeah I mean whereas on camp you have hundreds of journalists and media who have their cameras around their neck and that keeps them at a distance from everything. Or you have the NGOs with a high visibility vest and I'm not saying they don't do a great job, but it is separating. The situation on camp is really, really awful and really there's a lot of people who need support, but it's also become a very popular destination for people to come and see what's happening with the refugee crisis. Um, and it's not the shittest it's been. It's not the worst situation we've been faced with here, but it's the one that's got the most attention. And now we're in this situation where people are stuck, and it's just interesting to see the kind of progression from when there wasn't even a camp, people were just transitioning through really, really, really fast, like going straight through the border, straight into Macedonia, no problem. And now it's 
it's just gradually, gradually slowed down, more border closures, more unexplained periods of waiting, and now to this complete shutdown. And so being here for so long has given me this kind of very broad, broad outlook on actually what's going on and what's happened. It's really interesting to see with each border closure or with each political change or shift how that really affects what's happening on the ground. You know, uh, the mentality of 10,000 people can just change like that through like a small political decision or a lack of, you know, their hope gets changed. It's, it's much easier to manage a mass of hungry, half fucking cold, wet, living in the mud. A mass of that, that nature where people are just looking to survive than it is a mass of people with drive and hope. You know, take people's hopes and it's relatively easy to control. The recent decision of the European Union to close the borders that happened two days ago was decided in the, you know, agreement with Turkey has got in their center uh, the profit and the money. Right now they are uh, prisoned in the borders and they have uh, been to told that uh, they will stay here, they cannot uh, pass, they cannot move and that they will maybe have to go back to their countries or in Turkey. Depuis le 22 mars, euh, tout a chanté. En 48 heures, euh, on vidait les, les signes. Et ce, ce jour, les, les gens qui arrivaient de, de, étaient déjà illégaux. Quand on était là, la police parlait avec nous comme « Ils sont déjà illégaux, vous pouvez rien faire, euh, restez loin », des choses comme ça. Non? Tout, tous les gens qui arrivaient à depuis le 20 mars, sont envoyés dans le camp de Vial, qui est comme à 7 km. Et on, on peut arriver juste en voiture et c'est difficile parce que c'est une route perdue dans la, les montagnes. Et c'était compliqué et la situation, tous les gens étaient là à, en criant, demandant pourquoi nous sommes ici, qu'est-ce qu'il passe. Il ne connaissait rien de, de la situation politique ni légale en Europe. Et aussi, si tu t'approchais avec un appareil photo, tu devrais le, le cacher et tout ça pour ne pas montrer la réalité. Non? Et maintenant, la situation, c'est qu'il y a plus de 1200 personnes en prison dans les camps de détention à Vial. Je pense que pour moi, c'est juste une manifestation de la puissance que l'Europe has and is clinging on to like yes people are trying to enter and we can just say no and yeah people are people are angry about this decision people are saying this is a really awful decision but I mean I, I think a lot of the people here and very, me very personally I feel very powerless against this like I really really hate this decision I think on so many humanitarian levels it's wrong on so many levels of like equality and the way that people are chosen, whether they can go or they can stay. If you're a doctor that speaks English, yeah, you can probably go. If you're someone from a rural background, no, you probably don't have a chance at anything. And this inequality that Europe has created, it goes against all kind of basic ideas of dignity. And, it, and it's us that's doing this, and it's us that seems to have said, yeah, that's okay. I don't feel like I can push it any further because you're fighting this incredible power. This is just going to happen. There's not going to be a revolution or there's not going to be a change. It's going to be a pragmatic, bureaucratic takeover of this situation that is just going to take away people's human rights and it's just going to place them in a process which might not actually lead somewhere. But because it's kind of wrapped up in this political, bureaucratic wrapping, and it's also saving people now from a humanitarian crisis. It's just going to go through. I mean, it's, <coughs> it's incredible that such intolerance and such 
institutionalized racism in can be put through, but we are seeing it. It's happening right now. <laughs> you have all the power. You have the military. You have the economic. But all of this is politic. Politic is a bad game. We don't. We didn't choose to be in politic. Remember, every hand you put it in our countries, see what happens. You can see the consequences. See the results. You came to Iraq and you invaded us. And you are now saying that we are terrorists. Come back before you put any bullets in our country. How we were feeling, how we were living. Remember, please, remember this, that you are always doing the bad things and you just, just say that they are, they are the terrorists. Remember how we were treated by this, uh, this gangster guys. We run away about them and we are high here saying this is Europe. This is Europe. Thank you for everything. Thank you. I've heard that you catch the responsible of uh, Paris terrorist attack. Please judge him. Judge just him, not judge all the Muslims. ISIS is is uh, a terrorist and is not Muslim, just under the name of Islam. But the small kids in the future, they will grow up, they will say Islam is a terrorist. They are the European Union, they are afraid to bring the refugees to, to Europe because of the terrorists. The terrorists are everywhere. They, they are also in Europe. We are, uh, we are skipping from them. We need to go to safe place. We are human, human beings. We, we have a rights. Uh, we are uh, in war. The country is, uh, in Europe is unsafe. If you come to our country and say what happened, life is very difficult over there. We are waiting for more than three hours just to, just to eat one sandwich. And I didn't take a shower, by the way, for a week. I'm still waiting for nothing. I'm dying now. I'm dying slowly. You can see 15,000 with just two boxes of toilets. It's 12. It's just 12 uh, toilets. And you see, everything is against us. Whether the people. We are afraid of the, what happened, what will happen in this next second. This is Europe again. Uh, here it's very difficult. I'm uh, in the tent, in the street, at the port. Uh, it's not. It's illegal camp. It's not uh, official camp. And we are here just waiting for borders to open. There's a lot of enough people are helping us. In a food, uh, but the problem here is there is no uh, showers, you cannot take a shower here. People arrived and they're in the mud and the shit, uh, but they're consumed with moving forward on their journey. Like, this is why people have risked their lives in boats and with smugglers and any number of dangers to get here. But as it's gone on and the it's become more and more humanitarian crisis, I think people now are. I think probably more happy just to be alive. Uh, Northern Greece. Until now, Greek people thought it was very conservative. Uh, they thought that uh, they had a radical uh, right, uh, let's say, ideology. But uh, these uh, things that happened in Idomeni have uh, showed that uh, people of Northern Greece uh, have all actually opened their houses to the refugees and they do everything they can for these people to feel better and not to die. This is our um, goal in our movement, not only to open the borders, but also we will open all these, uh, the necessary buildings and uh, public uh, services that uh, will cover the needs of the people. Every summer uh, we have like 
10 million of tourists in Greece. But the immigrants are, don't fit. There is enough space and there is enough territory for these people to have a normal life. So uh, fighting against racism and fighting uh, for the borders and for the immigrants also means that we have to fight against uh, the Nazi party and uh, also against Islamophobia. Uh, for me, it's a very, very serious subject uh, that, uh, especially in Europe, is the, the main purpose of uh, racist laws. These people are not terrorists, they're victims of war. The only way to win and to get the asylum and to get the right for them and their children is to connect with the struggle that already is in Greece all these years. <laughs> Ils ont fermé les frontières, ils ont allumé la guerre d'Arthur et ils ont désparcé la mort. Après, je, je veux aussi pour traverser euh, Macédonie et Serbie par le montagne. Voilà. Il y a beaucoup de risques. Euh, Macédoine maintenant fermé. Je pense euh, je suis ici par Albania. Oui, Albania, il y a beaucoup de risques. Albania, c'est très dangereux parce qu'il y a les mafieux. Ouais. Voilà. C'est ça la vie. If they open the border, I have to, I have to go to Germany. After that, I go to Sweden because my brother over there. I have to be with them to help my family in Syria because they are not have anything. We want to help them to be alive. Nothing else. We'll help the country that help us, like. Any country will receive me, will help me to stand on my legs. I will never let her down. I will always uh, be one part of this country because uh, it will be my country, because it helps me. That's all what I need. And I hope I can take a shower today. <laughs> I have uh, since 20 days ago, I didn't take a shower. <laughs> yeah, that's all. I mean, for me, especially in the last couple of days, I think it's the frustration that, yes, I want to be here and I want to be doing this and I want to be making people's lives more bearable and better, but actually the hardest thing is the fact that now I'm almost telling Europe it's okay the decision they've made because I'm, I'm making it possible for people to stay in either many. Obviously I'm expressing my own opinions and at the same time, but through my actions I'm, I'm making it possible for people to be stuck. I think it's very important that, I don't know, something more can be done that this isn't just accepted. Mm. Of course we hope that they, they will, they will, the borders will be open, but I don't think that this is going to happen. So we try to make solutions here. And the sad thing is that uh, if they stay here, I think people we will take advantage of them. And most of them will work legally and in not good uh, situation. It's very bad to not be home. My, my grandparents were refugees. My grandma still misses her, her, her wants actually to see what was her family uh, house and where they, they used to live. And I know this is a very difficult situation and very bad. Je pense faire beaucoup de bruit, beaucoup de désobéir de, de au État. Tenter de changer euh, l'accord, de tomber l'accord, euh, c'est pas possible, c'est complètement raciste, xénophobe et, 
Et non, je pense que c'est important de euh, continuer. Et que plus de gens arrivent ici, plus de volontaires, et en collaborant, en travaillant, en montrer aussi ce, qu ce qui se passe. Parce que si, si on n'arrive pas ici, on ne sait pas qu ce qui se passe ici. C'est caché. We don't want to, to, you know, take them by the hand. I don't, I don't believe that they're stupid. I want these people to come and demonstrate. This is the real power. To show to the cities, to the neighborhoods, to the working places that we are here, that we are in the streets, that we can close the streets, we can demonstrate, we can take over the buildings. And uh, this is the real power. And we don't want these people to just to find a house and stay there. We want them to be in the streets with us. We want them to to get all the the, the good vibrations of our fight and our movement and be part of this movement and to be part of the of the feast that we have created against these uh, choices of this system that destroy our lives and lead it to barbary. Uh, they have lived barbary and we live it and they are the most important uh, circle in this chain. The goal that has to be that these people are in the center of the movement and uh, express everything they want. So there's no other way. Otherwise, they will be, you know, in the corner, like not connected with uh, with us. And it's too bad because it's power for the movement to have more uh, ideas in it. Not only workers to fight for their salaries, but also, you know, to to have a fight against fascism, against racism, against capitalism. <laughs> That's the point of the movement and that makes it stronger and more you know dangerous we are uh, need a new life we not uh, want to be bad man bad uh, persons in uh, europe no we want to new life because we see a lot of blood we don't want to make anything uh, mistake in europe we want to be a new life nothing else we want to forget the war from this from my head i will I want to forget everything. I want to be a new person. I think this is my message. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you so much. <laughs>